Und dann äh, die Schädel bleiben als einfach das, was man noch interpretieren kann. Dann. Wenig Anhaltspunkte für Krankheiten. When she died 3,000 years ago, a god state still existed in West Thebes, an advanced civilization which began 5,000 years ago. The embankment of the Nile belongs to the earliest settlement areas in the world. How did these people of Egypt live 3,000 years ago? The same means of transport used during the times of the pharaohs are still used today. When the archaeologists found her, they were faced with a mystery. Who was this woman? On the 7th of March, about 11 o'clock, suddenly a narrow perpendicular board appeared in the debris. At first I thought, oh, here we have a child's coffin. But as it turned out, it was a somewhat larger coffin, a woman's coffin. The sensation, an undamaged coffin, a mummy, a woman, and the mystery. She was found in a burial ground where she was not originally put to rest. Behind this mound of debris, which we are presently excavating, we assume another tomb from the Middle Kingdom. It could have been, as we can see here on the right, reused during the times toward the end of the New Kingdom, if you like, around 1200 or later. And then the coffin with our mummy was stored in this still unknown tomb, removed by grave robbers who deemed it as uninteresting, and simply left it there where we have now found it. Here in the valley where the mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut is situated, lies the tomb Professor Greffe is currently excavating. This desert valley is the ancient Theban necropolis. 3,000 years ago, she must have been buried somewhere here. The view of the burial ground. It was completely filled up with rubble from the desert. Although the coffin was found here, the rubble which covered it actually came from another tomb. A subterranean hippo style in the tomb of Ramosa. The wealthy ancient Egyptians built majestically for their eternal life in the hereafter. On the walls of the tombs, these reliefs perhaps could tell us something more about her life and her death. From the earliest times, her home on the Nile had always been very fertile, providing three harvests per year, even during her lifetime. Maybe her house stood somewhere here in these fields. Possibly, it looked like the houses that stand here now. Because even today, the bricks are made out of the same mud from the Nile and then dried in the sun. We took a look inside Amira's mud brick house. While she makes a fire and prepares the food, we try to imagine what it must have been like for our mystery woman who cooked in her mud house on the Nile 3,000 years ago. Except in those days, there was no veil. When grain is being ground, fine particles of stone dust get mixed up in the flour, which caused the teeth of the ancient Egyptians to be worn out quicker. Even the oven for baking bread is formed and made of mud from the Nile. 3,000 years ago, it did not look much different than it does today. Okay. Professor Greffe descends into the subterranean open-air court of the tomb. It was dug 11 meters below the surface, and was the central ritual area. Today, it is the science center where Professor Grefe's team is employed. Every find is removed from the rubble, carefully registered, 
and documented for scientific publication. The Egyptologist Anka Blobaum joins pot fragments together like a jigsaw puzzle. Last year, it was the mummy's coffin which she researched with great scientific care. Normally, there's a middle column on top of the coffin, where the name of the person is located. A great deal of work and effort went into cleaning the middle column, because that's where you can find more information about the person. We managed to clean the inscription, but unfortunately, there was no name mentioned. No name? That means our mummy was not one of the affluent and wealthy during her lifetime. Even fellow colleague Petra Fumberg, who, despite the coolness of science, talked about her feelings. It definitely was a tremendous feeling, and I always had this impression that when I looked at the face on the coffin, I could also see the face of this woman, even though the one has nothing to do with the other. So our mummy remains without a name and comes from an unknown grave. Our search for traces about the life of this woman continues in the tombs of the necropolis. Wall reliefs, women carrying sacrificial offerings, was the custom in ancient Egypt a thousand years before Christ. Perhaps the woman in the coffin was one of these. Or did she belong to a privileged class of temple dancers at the time? women have guarded and retained the various forms of dance, which still have ritual meaning even today. The evil spirits are driven out by drumming, clapping, and trilling. Nowadays, however, women prefer to dance among themselves because it is a woman's dance without men. Only children are allowed to be there, and with exceptional luck, our camera team. <laughs> 